This is my 2D rotary mill. That's the electrical box. I had the surprise when I when I purchased it. I thought it was uh, a uh, two uh, two forty four eighty motors in there, and uh, when I uh, started working on it. It became apparent that uh, somebody had been in there and changed them all to straight 480 volts. So, sort of a awakening moment. I started, I did quite a bit of cleanup on it. The major part was pulling the spindle out. That was that was quite a project. It was frozen in there. I just got uh, that zinc chromate primer on that light. They were, I got some pictures I'll put in here of how rusted and crusty they were. I took them apart, those switches right here. They're a rotating switch. They operate like that and there's a, a ratchet in there. And over the years, this thing was built in 1942. Over the years, metal particles and dust and everything else had collected in there. And when I first turned it on, it was okay. And then all of a sudden, this one started popping and powing, so I cut it off. Just shut it, you know, cut the wires and put, and, uh, put a cap on them. And then uh, uh, the other side actually caught on fire. I had the flames coming out of it and uh, right out of here and out of here and I thought wow what is this so then I took them both down and when I took them apart the, these switches these ratchets had collected pieces of of uh, millings and so forth and it just all of a sudden it was shorting everything out in there and, and it, it, these particles would get together and pow smoke and start fire anyway now they're all working properly again they were held together you can see in the pictures, they were held together with these these things here. I just uh, cut a little conduit and uh, made a collar there and brazed them in there so that they a little more respectful of what they are. Um, anyway, the 480, this is a test. This is six gauge, which is way overkill. I don't need all of this, but it came with this uh, 480 to 240 three phase 30 kVA transformer. So what I did was is I rewired it inside uh, and hooked it up backwards. So now I have 240 in, three phase from my three phase converter. Uh, into there, actually into the box and then into there and then out of there at 480. And interestingly that's a delta, that's a delta uh, configuration in there but the legs when they get over here they mimic what goes in on the on the three phase. So when they go in into here I have uh, uh, two legs at 479 and I have one leg, it's a hot leg, just like comes out of the uh, the three phase and that runs about uh, 489, 493 in there. The fellow, uh, then when I was cleaning it up originally, I think it must have been my fault, I uh, stuck an air nozzle down inside the tube for the uh, uh, um, digital readout for the X for the Y axis so what I did was I just temporarily replaced it with uh, a cheap uh, but very effective uh, little uh, readout for that so I got uh, the X's on the trionics because I can't find anybody that will work on those uh, it's like a glass bar in there with a slider 
Uh, but this works fine. Uh, so I got the, the Y axis on here and the X axis on there. And uh, the fellow I bought the machine from, I didn't get, if you'll notice down here, I don't have an air pump and I don't have a, uh, uh, a coolant pump. Both of those had been taken off. I think uh, they were basically using this machine to make uh, EDMs and graphite and everything was all locked up inside the spindle. I had to drive it out of there. But once I got it out and cleaned up, it's working fine now. But they didn't need that for the uh, for tooling on. You know they were tooling out EDMs. Um, so <clears throat> the fell anyway. The fellow I bought it from was a tool and die maker, and he'd worked in a shop. They had five of these, and he said they didn't have knee lifts. They didn't have the automatic knees on those either. And he says the guys or the the ones they had three of them that didn't have them. The guys rigged up a deal where they took the knee the knee wheel that's over here and moved it over to this side, and then they built one of these uh, to crank with. And actually, it works pretty damn good. I built that and put it on there and moved it around, and so now I can crank this up and down, but fortunately, this machine is so fantastic. It, you know, I, I built this on here, one setup, set it in there, and then proceeded to mill this whole thing with without unlocking, without moving, without doing anything. I, I did the, the minors, the majors, outside and inside diameters and, and knocked these out. And, uh, you know, my right angle trig's a little rusty, but it doesn't require a lot of, you know, a little common sense. You know, you, you knock off the first cut here and then you just go hit the rotary and you go around 90 degrees, knock the next one off, 90 degrees, knock the next one off, another 90 degrees, knock the next one off, and then repeat it for the other side. So uh, I made myself a little um, spanner wrench that uh, uh, I used to take apart the, uh, the drive gear for my 2HL. The controls of the Kearney and Trekker 2D uh, rotary are simple, and the machine micrometers and scales are amazingly accurate. This piece gave me the opportunity to test the rotary feed, the quill feed, and the cross slide. Um, the following videos show the milling of this spanner wrench uh, and actually the maiden voyage of uh, this Kearney and Trekker 2D. <laughs>